deserve listeners, it's time for part three in which I react to Katie and Greg on The Bachelorette. Bachelorette, let's watch. I'm so sad because I spilled my heart out to her last night. I don't know when I told her I was in love with her. She really didn't have any reaction. I'm going to get a workout in. Get yeah, I, I get his feelings 100%. As I've been saying, under normal circumstances, I think, because I think prior at least to that uh, uncomfortable moment, she had chosen him. And so under normal circumstances, because I, I think he feels the love from her, but he's not hearing confirmation and he knows she's going to be dating these other men. And so that would be a rough situation to be in. And of course, from her standpoint, that's a rough. It's almost like the show is ruining their relationship. <laughs> Or revealing it. That's another way of putting it. It's like revealing his other side to her so she can make a better decision. I don't know. I wanted to find out what went wrong in that moment. I'm just trying to be honest with, with myself in the situation. I mean, I'm in love with this girl, but something isn't right. So I'm worried. I, I think he is still under this assumption that she did something wrong. When, if I were his friend, I would, or his therapist, frankly, I would say something like, it's just a circumstantial problem. It, there's a lot of evidence pointing that she loves you and wants, and has already chosen you. So stop pressuring her because she can't do anything about that. And that's just going to push her away, frankly. So just, you know, let go a little bit. Realize you don't have any power of the situation. You're doing everything you can to make this work. And... The other thing I might actually talk with him about is, okay, let's say that it doesn't work out with her. You know that you'll be okay, right? This is a very important part of dating, by the way. This is a very important part of any relationship is to know, because, and our culture in mainstream American culture is actually counter this, counter to this. We actually, through all of our love songs and Disney movies and rom-coms and, and uh, Hallmark cards, there's this notion of, I can't live without you. Um, I need you more than anything. I can't be without you. And that actually isn't helpful. Now, you can feel that way, kind of. There's certainly uh, feelings that we have, which is, I don't know what I'd do without you. But, but consciously, you should be able to say to yourself, like a grown, mature adult, that, well, if things don't work out with them, I'll survive. You know, I, I've broken up with people in the past, and, and I'm still a good person, and I'll grieve, and it'll be sad, and it'll suck, and I'll probably have my ups and downs in, you know, the initial months after the breakup. But... You know, I'll live. I have other things in my life. I have my friends. I have my family. I have myself. I have my, my pets and my, you know, I have my job. I have the meaning of my life. I have a lot of things and, and I want to, I want a companion I, I, and I want that, I want that deep love, but it's not the only thing in my life that I have to, that I have. And, uh, so I would wonder if he's putting all of his eggs in that basket, which makes him so much more desperate, which makes him so much more pressuring to her. It's clear to me she's not feeling the same. It's just like, it's just clear. So y'all know that I watch 90 Day Fiance and Darcy is one of the characters, cast members that I have watched the most because y'all have said to go to the back to the very beginning. <laughs> she was one of the first people that everyone's, oh, you got to watch Darcy. You got to go back to the beginning. And I was like, really? The very beginning? There's so many episodes. And and uh, I was like, I, I don't know if I have time for that. And uh People kept asking for it, and the pod wife was like, you got to do it. And I was like, okay. And I've actually really enjoyed it, and I feel like I really know Darcy pretty well by now. And she has a schema of, of people aren't really going to be there for me. People are going to leave me. Uh, I can't attain love. It's just not going to happen. And he, he seems to be exhibiting a similar schema at this moment. Uh, there was a little bit of discomfort. There was nothing explicitly communicated from her that she wasn't in love with him anymore. There was that one sentence she said, but that was pretty minor. But from his standpoint, he thinks it's been ruined. It, like uh, she doesn't love him anymore. It's over or something, you know, which uh, maybe, but it doesn't seem to have evidence. And like Darcy... <laughs> He is rushing into that with that assumption instead of saying, well, I, it feels this way, but is it actually this way? And if you rush into it with undifferentiation, with fusion, uh, and an inability to evaluate your emotional reactivity, 
then you can really push someone away because naturally if so if, if you go off his assumption that she has now ditched him you know emotionally she's done with him that would be unfair given the circumstance i mean all is fair in love and war but it, it you'd be upset you know you'd be upset if you're a great so you might go to her the next time you see her and say how dare you uh, you know reject me after i poured my heart out when that isn't what happened <laughs> but then of course that will push them away and then she will reject him so is that what's going to happen because that that that'll be heartbreaking i thought we understood each other completely inside and out and i've been nothing but vulnerable with her i've done nothing but empty my heart to her without her telling me she's falling in love with me yet at least feeling it you know again you're on a you're on the bachelorette she can't say that it's not i if that if was it just the previous season where that one uh, bachelorette ruined the entire show and threatened the entire franchise by breaking all the rules and intimating and maybe even saying that she had made her choice you know too early like I wonder, again, I just wonder if he's never watched the show and he's just confused. He, I don't understand. And it's like, dude, that, that's, that's, how it, that's how the show always is. And she's giving you every indication. Anyway. I don't know how this conversation is going to go. I don't know what she's going to say. I'm nervous. All right, Greg, here's what you should say. <laughs> So this is what I would say is, okay, I don't know what happened last night. I'm confused. I don't know what's going on. I had a moment where I got paranoid that you didn't love me, but I don't know. I, I I'm probably making that up, but it, I feel it. I Do you love me? Can you reassure me that you don't have to say you love me, but can you reassure me again in, in your wonderful way, Katie? Cause she's pretty good at it without saying you love me because I know you're not supposed to and without saying you haven't you've chosen me because I know you're not supposed to can you just reassure me that that you're you really like me and that your that your feelings are strong for me can can you can you do that I'm sure Katie would rise to the occasion and do it and, and then he'd he'd still walk away unsatisfied but you know a, a lot more stable let's see what he says you still seem nervous what do you mean I don't know, you don't seem, you don't seem comfortable. So, yeah, for Katie, it's good. She's, she's good at reflecting emotions. And I don't know if that works for him, though. I, but I don't know if anything's going to work for him in this moment. He seems really distressed. He seems just completely out of sorts right now. I, if, if I were there, I'd be like, okay, go to the bathroom, take a few deep breaths, you know, like relax it. You know, what's... People love you. <laughs> Look into the mirror. <laughs> People love you. Everything's fine. You know, if things work out, great. If they don't, you'll you'll be okay. Just tell her how you feel. Tell you know, trust her. She's she's a good person. Like you're you're okay. Just take a deep breath. And tell you, but he seems real tight, and and that lends itself to either like I said, inexperience or or some relational trauma of betrayal or someone not loving him the way that he wanted to be loved or something something's going on here when i express that to you when i express that i do love you i felt like i was telling that to a stranger and that night here i was thinking that i was expressing my love to my future wife okay this is going well let's see if he can end it well he should say something like but i don't know maybe i'm just making stuff up maybe i'm just paranoid he should add that it's always something you should add in when you're in a potential conflictual relationship because he's kind of accusing her of something that she could be like i don't think that's true now watching i wasn't there but didn't seem like that way to me it seemed like she was there for him and listening to him and really kind of tolerating him at the end there a, a lot so uh, i think he is uh, seeing things that aren't there, seeing a threat that isn't there. But this is good. He's laying it out on the line. I react to a lot of TV shows, and we see much uh, you know, less healthy ways of communicating about this sort of thing. So this is good. He, he's, he's, telling her he's telling her his experience. I haven't told anyone that I love them here. It's the one thing that, regardless of how I'm feeling, I want to say for the very end, because it just doesn't feel right to say that, knowing that there are other guys still here. 
Good. I, I don't know if this is going to work for him, though, because she, she said essentially similar things before last night. And I, I, I think anything short of you're the one, I love you, uh, I don't I, – I, th- I, I think there's something kind of stuck in it. There's some kind of barrier to – being flexible in this situation for him, and uh, he seems to be in a in a pretty rigid place at this point. So, I, I don't know if this is going to work, but uh, I see where she's coming from. I understand. There's other guys here. You didn't even acknowledge what I said to you. You completely mowed over it, and it scared the hell out of me. Okay, second part is great. Scared the heck out of me. First part, I don't. I don't think it's a fair accusation. It would have been more fair for him to say it felt like you motored. I don't know if you did, but in the moment it felt like you just disregarded it. But I don't know. Maybe I'm just in a, maybe I'm just so terrified of losing you that it felt that way to me. So uh, again, on the scale of things, not, you know, on a scale from one to 10 with 10 being the most healthy, this is definitely, this conversation is definitely like a seven. It's, it's, you know, it's, Definitely on the above average. I mean, of the shows y'all want me to watch, this is could you know? Let's see what let's see what she says. She seems pretty resilient and mature, so I'm guessing she'll not be triggered by. Well, I don't know. Let, let's see what she says. Thing is, I'm like trying to reflect back, and like there was a lot of emotions that night, and maybe I was just trying to do more listening than talking. I even I even feel like right now you're giving me like a surface level response. Like I'm talking to you. I'm not asking for this stuff. Yikes. I think this is where I'm starting to get worried uh, because his rigidity is is pretty strong. Um, uh, on one level, well, I don't know. I mean, on one level, it. Uh, so if you watch the show, her behavior makes sense. If you don't watch the show, show and you and you know or you have the suspicion that the two of them have already made a decision about each other a while ago, at least a part of themselves, then you kind of know where he's coming from. He's just like, how come you're not just throwing your arms around my shoulders and saying you don't want to lose me? I, like, I don't understand. Aren't we in love? Aren't we like supremely in love? I feel like you're just giving like this political answer. But of course she has to, because it's this show. I, I think that's where she's coming from. <laughs> if the cameras weren't there and they were just regular dating, she'd be like, you're the one. Like, so will you stop? Like. <laughs> Anyway, but she can't. So, uh, but I'm a little worried because he he either is a obli- I can't figure out if he's oblivious, and his problem generates from that. Like he doesn't understand how this show works, or he just isn't seeing things very well. Or if he if he does understand, he does have the capacity to understand what's happening, but he is transferring he's displacing something from earlier in his life onto her and because there's some kind of distortion there of you are you're like a robot essentially he's accusing her of withholding from him uh, withholding love and and turning off her love which there's i don't see any evidence of that at all actually like this is real this is real life this isn't like how you told me you already told my family i'm getting a rose this week like the rose. I don't give a about the rose. I was just telling you that you filled a hole in my heart. But Greg, this isn't real life. This is the Bachelorette. <laughs> I, I, get, I, I totally get where this is. Why? From the very beginning of this fight, I, 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 you know, I saw the scaffolding of the eventual terrible statue that would be built of their conflict. Wow, that's quite a sentence. The. He is such a romantic and he's so in love that he doesn't want to deal with the rules of the show. And he's just like, screw the rose and screw screw everything. And she's like, but this is a reality TV show. But let's see what she says because she might, I, I think there's a legitimate part of her that also wants to be like that. Because I'm sure there's a part of her that like, I don't want to have to wade, th- I don't want to have to go on these other dates I've made up my mind. Can't we just skip forward a little bit? So this will be interesting. But on the other hand, she's he's yelling at her, essentially, 
which is going to hurt her and cause her to want to pull back. So let's see what she does. I heard it and I heard it during our one on one day. And I'm sorry that I didn't didn't say more. I just know how big of a night it was. And with your dad and emotions, like I just was listening more. Like, I, I, I wish I could. Read. You, you weren't listening, though. Yikes. Yikes. So it, there's this more rigid distortion. She was listening. <laughs> It was clear. She was listening. She was with him. Now, maybe her style of listening um, or the way she expresses her listening isn't the way he likes it. But to accuse her of not listening is is a bit of a yikes for me of that, sel that's that self-assuredness I've been talking about that he's made up his mind and he he's sure that she's a jerk face and that she has betrayed him. And definitely it seems like something has been superimposed on top of this relationship from his past. I just saw like this shift in your body and and at the time and even now, like I'm thinking back, like I don't remember like. For you to like sit there in that hallway and tell me that I'm the one giving up on us, it just like, it hurt me so much. Okay, I don't think that's what she said. <laughs> I don't, I mean, I, I think there was something along those lines, but I don't think it was that. I don't, and I don't think she said, you're giving up on us. I, but that's how he feels as to what was said. Um, so, yeah, this is, it's unfortunate. But I think, as, as I've been saying, this might be very illuminating for her of, oh, there's a different side to this guy <laughs> that I don't know if I like. So it, it's interesting to go from I'm all in with Greg to uh, maybe – not for me. I'm guessing she might be going through that right now. I don't know. It's that's obvious, you know, and as much as it hurts me, I've reached my breaking point with this. I, I gave you everything. I really hope you find something. Wow. I mean, what a germ. I can see why people want me to react to this. I mean, the, the swing that he has taken from I am all into uh, I'm done. I, I mean, that's what it's, is that what he's saying? Is he saying he's done with this? Pro I think he's going to break her heart. I think he's going to break her heart. I think she's pretty stable with her thoughts and pretty, um, I don't know, capable emotionally. So I, I think that I don't think she's, you know, because uh, <laughs> on, on other shows, she'd be like, well, screw you. But I, I think I think she genuinely is having her heart broken right now. She was there for him she was giving all these subtle clues like you're the one uh to the family i think he's the one and they were having all these wonderful times and they were gelling and they were bonding over their grief and then because she was kind of quiet when she was listening to him uh grieve he's like i can't believe how much you betrayed me and so i'm done with you like wow uh, I mean, he neither he's not doing this on person and purpose. A lot of people will accuse people like this. Oh, he's a gaslighter. He's a malignant narcissist. He's a manipulator. You know, there's. Yeah, I I don't think. So. I mean, maybe I, I don't know. It's all just conceptualizations, anyway. It's your opinion, and everyone has their opinion. But I think if I was to take a guess, this. A strong hypothesis conceptualization is that he is superimposing something from his past onto this. And we have seen, we've heard little details that might indicate that this has been an ongoing problem for him. Um, he has been down. He says he's been sad for a long time, you know, even before his dad died. Um, and I will tell you, and I can't believe I haven't mentioned this yet is that when we have significant grief, a significant loss, like you know his father dying, it can really screw up the way that we process our emotions, like make no doubt about it. When we lose someone close to us, whether it's through death or through a divorce or through something else, we everything gets thrown up uh, in, in, into chaos. And in fact, when I was in graduate school 25 years ago, there was this book I took during a class on divorce therapy that uh, the book was called Crazy Time. And it was about people going through divorces and, and just how, quote unquote, crazy people are during that time because it just throws everything off. 
So there's a possibility that, uh, particularly because of the grief that he's going through, that his emotions are all over the place. And maybe this is one of the symptoms of it. I don't know. I can't even like comprehend like what it is you're trying to say right now. Are you not wanting to stay anymore? Are you done? I, I, yeah, I, I, uh. So either he is subtly trying to passively get her to say, please don't go as evidence of her love that he, he's fishing in a very dysfunctional way, I will say. Uh, or he is in so much distress, which I think is a stronger candidate, like so much emotional distress. I feel it in his voice, his body language. Ever since that turn that he made, I think something deep emerged from within him and his, has sort of you know, taken up home in his heart. It's, and it's, it's hard to get rid of, and it's causing so much pain for him. And his, his reaction or his um, way of dealing with this is to run. And, you know, you'll hear me talk about avoiding attachment. And I, I don't know. Um, I don't know what attachment style he's exhibiting. If anything, he might be exhibiting preoccupation, actually, if I think about it. But we all know, and you'll hear me talk about, people can be mixtures of preoccupied and avoidant and or disorganized. I mean, there's also some level of fearful disorganized. I don't know. I, I can't diagnose from afar. I would never. I, I don't want to. But um, I, I think that any, my point is, is that I, I think he's going through a lot of emotional distress right now, and he's panicking on the inside. So this one time you think you didn't get me, you just want to be done. This one time? I'm, I'm sorry. Like, there's, I don't... there's days away from an engagement, and I told you that you filled a hole in my heart and you didn't even acknowledge it. Yeah, uh, so that, I, I wouldn't go that far, but I do see where he's coming from. I still don't think it's a fair accusation because he does he not understand he's on the Bachelorette. But yeah, he did. He he was he was professing all sorts of things to her, and she was uh, quietly listening because I think in her mind she's like, well, he's going through, he's crying, he's going through the grief thing right now, and I you know, I want to be a a good partner. I'm listening, and then he he's professing his undying love and. I bet you anything she's thinking in that moment, I've already overextended myself. I've already broken rules on this show. I just told his family that he's a front runner. I said, I don't want to say front runner, but da da da. So I, if anything, she's thinking, I got to pull back. I'm breaking a lot of rules as it is. And so she was there. She's holding his hand. She's listening. But he interprets, but that's, this is the key. The key is, is that he interpreted it as her withholding on purpose either because she was trying to punish him for some unknown reason or she literally just didn't love him. And that is, that's that misinterpretation and the assuredness that he has around that misinterpretation it, and his typical way of coping with that misinterpretation is the cause of all this problem. And for her, she's just a, a victim of that as far as I can tell. But again, if this were real life, she wouldn't she probably would have said me too right she would have just reassured him me too i'm in i'm 100 into you too but she couldn't say that and so that hurts him and so i you know i get it but i don't understand his his decision here <laughs> just <laughs> but uh, but uh, if i were katie's friend i'd be like well uh, maybe i dodged a bullet because this isn't the first time this isn't the only this if you married him this wouldn't be the last time that whatever trauma this was would crop up. Now, maybe with therapy, it would help. But anyway, this is pretty, pretty shocking. I understand that you have other guys here. I get it. But it was extremely difficult to hear you not understand what I needed in, the, in those moments. Because I think for her, this is going to destroy her. What is she supposed to... She. I mean, what is she supposed to do now? Go like, well, I guess it's runner-up time. Like, okay, what what was the other guy that I was, I had already basically said I didn't want to be with? Do do we now just go with like second place? I wanted to be with this guy, and now he's what is happening? And and even if I choose runner-up, how do I know this isn't going to happen again? Like, this is this is rough for her. This is terrible. Yes, I. I... <sighs> 
I told everyone in my family that you were the one and that I was going to marry you. And I felt that. Now, people get in all sorts of rough fights and will say all sorts of rough things. This is not a done deal. And maybe they will. There's a way to come back from this. She could say, honey, can, can you just, if I were her, I'd say, well, I don't know what I'd do with it if I were her, because I'd be like, well, I don't know if I want to deal with this. But if she wants to deal with it, and <laughs> she's still in it to win it, she could say something like, I, I, we, don't leave, please. I'm begging you. I am begging you. Do not leave. Please, don't. I don't want you to leave. I want you to stay. Um, please trust the process. We'll, we'll have another date tomorrow, and Let's, let's try to reconnect. I'm guessing if we can get that loving feeling back again, like you'll feel it again and, and you'll feel it from me and everything will be like it was because I don't think, I don't think you're seeing things accurately right now. Like there's a way that she could say that that might work for him. I don't think he deserves it, frankly, but, but there's a way out of it and then maybe that would convince him. Let's see. My heart that I was so certain about you. You think like I want to tell you this because I don't want to date anymore. The way he's um, coming across, I think he actually is still holding out. I think he is still hoping that she will change. He's he's doing. You ever seen that Key and Peele uh, sketch? Megan, come on, Megan. You know how Megan always she'll get upset and go, oh, and then she'll walk away and then. Uh, you know, he's he's like, Megan, come on, come back. And she, so sometimes, so I wonder if he is doing a more intense version of that, of like he's running and hoping that she will chase as, and that will be, okay, I can be, I, I, I'm rest assured that she actually does love me. In a way, it's almost like a test to see, well, if I do this, it, it's not usually conscious because uh, that would be Machiavellian and psychopathic to do that to someone. It's usually like 95% subconscious. I, I wonder, because if he were truly done, he he might not have even had this conversation or he would have said like, look, I don't think you're into me and, you know, let's be, you know, see you see later. But he, he seems to be still kind of holding on. But I think she's so destroyed, she's, she's not going to chase. And why would she really? I don't know. I think I don't know. And like, I just feel so helpless. I can't. Oh my God. I am, I don't even. I think that seeing her cry is helping him have some faith a little bit, but I think he's, I think he, I don't know, but I suspect he's hoping that she will say, I bet you anything what he is, what the fantasy he has in his mind is she will say, I agree with you. Screw this show. Screw the rose. I profess my love for you. I want to marry you right now. Here's my ring. Will you please marry me? You know, I, and the thing is, is like, if he wasn't so much of a jerk face this past 12 hours with her, I think she might have actually done it because I, I think she was really into him, but because he was so rigid and accusatory. I think in her mind, she's thinking part of me wants to do that. But the other part of me is like scared of this guy now. I'm sorry that that night went the way it did. But also I am confused at how that one night can change everything. Right. From her standpoint, she's like, okay, maybe I was a little standoffish. I don't think I was, but let's say I was. You're just going to break up with me because of that? <laughs> like, I, I don't understand. And uh, again, I think what's happening is something deep in him is being triggered and, and poked at. Some wound is being poked at. Because it wasn't you anymore. It wasn't. That wasn't you. Katie, you put up a wall that night in front of me. And you haven't done that for me before. Right. There it is. That's what I was suspecting is that he thinks she purposely put up a wall which I don't think that's what happened. I don't think there was a wall to begin with. Oh, well, if anything, she was putting up a little bit of a barrier because she's like, well, I, I want to show I can't reveal everything that's in my heart. And when I hear people say that 99% of the time, the people I've worked with, someone did that to them in their past. Someone did put up a wall. 
someone did deny them, someone did withdraw, someone did betray them, someone did reject them unfairly, and they're just displacing it onto another person. You've always been my number one from the very beginning. I don't want to hear. No, I'm just uh, saying. Your like, number, like your number one, and the, saying, like, the rose. I don't want to hear that I'm just stuff. Saying, like, I, have I, I don't. To. I don't. I don't. That's okay, like, fine. You're right. I'm but, sorry. That's, that's how I feel. Like this guy. I, I'm still with this conversation. It still makes sense. He, he, I think he's trying to say, stop talking bachelorette talk. <laughs> I don't want to be like a game show contestant. I, this is our lives we're talking about here. In some respects, I will say that his the way he talks is the way that. I would talk if I was on. I'd be like, can we just do a, can't, this is the rest of our lives. Can you just tell me yes or no right now? So, that, you know, so uh, on, on some level, he's rational to to say, can you please stop using that lingo? Uh, I'm a human being. You're a human being. Stop talking in bachelorette talk. I don't know if that is even, even is bachelorette talk, but um, so, yeah. So maybe there is a way out of this conversation. Maybe there is a way to prepare what's happening right now. Maybe they'll, because he's still sitting there. Because if he was truly done, he just, he would walk off, right? So let's watch. And how, how you told me that night, like, I told your family you have a rose. I was telling them you were the one. Who cares about the rose or the number one or the number two or who's getting sent home this week? If it's not real, it's not real. I just wanted something real. <laughs> yeah, I, I totally get it. But you're on a show and you chose to be on The Bachelorette. It's not real. It's a fake situation. Now, the love can be real, but it can't be expressed in a real way because you're on The Bachelorette. It's a show. I don't know at this point because you're still sitting in front of me saying you're my number one here and t until maybe you're then number two. I'm sorry. You're right. That didn't come off the way I wanted to. Yeah, but, but, but still, that's, that's, that's how you're thinking with this. That's, how, that's, that's what's going on in your mind with this. You're right. So then you see that turn he makes or that expression that he said that's the part that's a yikes for me the, the other stuff i can get behind him on it's just like will you please stop using bachelorette talk i can get behind him on that 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 seems like it's fair to say if i was on the show i i that's why i don't go on shows like this because from day one i'd be like this is ridiculous i i don't like this this situation it seems kind of weird to me <laughs> that we have to can't we just date like normal human beings but so, so I get that, but then you see that what he says is like, and you're you you're doing something wrong here. You know, there's an there's an accusation that he is saying that I don't think is fair at all. I mean, maybe I'm not seeing something, but I, I don't see anything that she's doing that is accusable. I don't know how to naturally date multiple people up to a point of engagement. Like I have my struggles all, too. All I was asking for was just for you to be real with me. I thought that we were more than that. I thought that you thought of us more than that you know in some ways he is more of the romantic he might be the most romantic person that's ever been on this show i've again i haven't watched all the shows but he is saying i thought our love transcended this tv show i thought that our love was deeper so deep I, I and I felt it for you and i thought you felt it for me it was so deep that it was way beyond this entire show now this has all been triggered by the fact that she was a little quiet while she was listening to him cry about his feelings and about his his father. She there was just there was this a split second where he turned on her, and so on one level you could say well prior to that turn she was kind of breaking the rules and they were this super romantic couple that was you know seem genuine and really like intensely in love with each other especially from him so it's this accusation thing that he is getting into this uh, self-assured distortion of her that he you know he knows what happened and, and it's an accusation that that's what is a distortion and that is what you know lends itself to a lot of therapy I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry. Like I'm sorry. You know, I I, I want to go back and like relive that moment and see. And I'm sorry. And and I just don't think you get it, Katie. I, I I don't I don't I don't I don't think you get where I'm at. And I think she does. I think, I think what he's hoping for, like I've been saying, is for her to say, "Stop the show. I'm done. I choose him." I think anything short of that, he is going to see it in a black and white manner and he will see it as her withholding and in a sense she is but 
you know, uh, she's on a show. And if he just was a little patient for, I don't know, maybe another week, everything would have been fine. But as it is, it looks like it might be ending. I really just like, I, I'm so confused. I'm so, I've given you everything I have to offer. I showed you who I am. I showed you what we can be. I just, I... Yeah, it's heartbreaking. I, I will say that I'll repeat the hypothesis I said earlier that either through an experience or something, some arrested development, maybe that he is talking, he's giving me a vibe of someone that is much younger. Uh, I'm not saying, I'm not putting him down. I'm not saying he's, we all regress, but he has talked about how he hasn't felt like this before. And I think he's 27 and um, you know, I'll go on. I don't know about him, but I'll, I'll, t I'll tell you uh, something I learned uh, bef before I was a ther long before I was a therapist. I developed, I, I developed this uh, tenet of life, this philosophy of life when I, I don't know, I was probably like 17 that you're not a real person until you've had your heart broken. And you know, that's a silly pithy thing to say, but uh, my contention at the time, and I, I somewhat still believe it, is that until you've had your heart broken, you can't really know yourself or how to relate to other people romantically. Because until you've, before you've had your heart broken, you live in a fantasy childish world in which everything is supposed to be perfect or so, there's some, I guess there are different versions of the fantasy that we have growing up. but. Uh, in my experience, anecdotally, everyone has this fantasy, particularly with all the media that, that mainstream America has about romance that is completely uh, not reflective of reality or potentially reflective of the fantasy. And the, uh, the, he seems to exhibit that because there was a little bit of a rub and he went from, oh my God, this is the best thing ever to, oh my God, this is the worst thing ever. Instead of, well, maybe she just... She, she just wasn't into me. You know, uh, mature love, once we've had enough of heartbreak, we realize I th this is, you know, a lot of people will say this as well. And I know some people might not like to hear this, or maybe I'm wrong, but that w longer, more adult, more realistic relationships, uh, we understand that there are days when you're not really super in love. I mean, you love the person, but you're not super in love with each other. You might even go through months where you're not super in love with the other person because it's just kind of how things work. Uh, there, there's intense feelings in the beginning that really bond us and then uh, it morphs into something different. You could say more beautiful, more long lasting, more realistic, but it's different. And uh, so when we fall in, so when you have that realistic version of love and you fall in love again, you know, okay, it's not always going to be wonderful. It's not always going to be this fantasy land. There's even in the beginning of a relationship, you're, there's going to be moments where we're not going to really connect. And he seems so intolerant of that one tiny little moment of disconnection, which I think was completely invented in, my, in his mind. But people do that, you know, like, oh, I'm not feeling it right now, even though it's not really happening. But his reaction to it is what is interesting, you know, that this complete intolerance of just like, oh my God, what's happening? How dare you? What are you doing? You're betraying me. It, that I wonder if his next five relationships, he will break himself of these fantasies and he'll become more flexible and tolerant. I don't know. I don't know. Tell me what you think of the comments. All right. Well, that does for that episode. Tune in next time when I continue watching and everyone out there, please take care of yourself because you deserve it. You really, really do.